Hey you guys, so today I thought I would go through with you my uh, shit I travel with. I was putting eyeshadows into a little uh, palette on Periscope and you guys were like, tell us what you're putting in there for your like neutral travel palette, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, I'll just do a video, how about that? I've had this asked multiple times, like what makeup I travel with, how I travel with makeup and don't have it break and stuff like that. Um, and I think you guys will actually be surprised. I'm a pretty light traveler. Also, side note, I watch a lot of people's YouTubes, YouTubes, and uh, I look at their nice hair that they do for every video, and I'm always like, I'm gonna start doing my hair for every video. I'm not going to. I'm gonna wear a greasy ponytail on a hoodie, and we'll just, anyways. Okay, let's jump into it. So, whence I travel, I like to pack it all into this little uh, thing. All the makeup I will bring is just like what's in here. This is like a little insert from, it's called a Zuka bag. It's like a traveling kind of like wheel thing for makeup artists. My Zuka came with like four of these and I just took one out and I use it for travel now. So when I'm traveling, I try to pick products that are usually cream based um, or loose powders, things that can't break essentially. Um, and I also try to pick anything that is in like a compact kind of packaging so that I'm not wasting a bunch of space and having a ton of loose objects in my bag. The more things that are loose, the more things are kind of rattling around and more chance of things getting broken, whatever. So my next trip coming up, I'm going to Mexico. I'm gonna be there for two weeks. Um, so a lot of this stuff is gonna be kind of geared around uh, the makeup I'm intending to wear in that weather. What makeup I bring will kind of change based on where I'm traveling to, what I'm planning to do while I'm there, all that kind of stuff. But the first thing I packed uh, is my Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. I like this day to day and I like traveling with it because I just find that it's something that's a little bit more kind of chill. Like it's a gentler, softer highlight. So on days where like I'm doing a no makeup makeup and I don't want to spend a ton of time on my um, makeup and look super glamorous and over the top, uh, I like this as an option for a highlight. I also like putting it underneath my foundation to kind of brighten up my skin really quickly. So I'm gonna be traveling with that one. I don't love traveling with um, glass bottles, but if I need to, I will put it in a sock. For my foundation, I like to bring usually two, sometimes three shades of foundation, just depending, especially if I'm going somewhere where I might be kind of becoming more tanned or whatever. So because we're going to Mexico, I brought two shades of my MAC face and body um, because I'm, I'm intending to get a sick tan. And I wanted to go for something super lightweight that was really just like quick and easy to slap on, um, not too much thought put into it kind of thing. So I've been bumming face and body real hard lately. I've been basically only using this, um, shearing it out with like a serum or whatever, but I will be bringing those too. I like that they're in these plastic bottles because nothing can really happen to them in travel. For my concealer, I'm also bringing two shades, again, just because like, Tanning, skin color might kind of change a little bit throughout the trip. Um, so I'm bringing two shades of the Josie Moran uh, Vibrancy Concealer. I like that concealer. It's just really nice and kind of like dewy, uh, fresh looking. Um, I find that it shears out really beautifully into the skin and sits really nicely. Then I have my Hourglass Veil Mineral Powder. So this is just a loose powder. I set my under eyes with loose powder either way, but I do prefer traveling with a loose powder over a pressed one just because pressed has the opportunity to kind of shatter and get all fucked up in your bag. Even though I just said, I typically like to travel with a loose powder. I'm bringing a pressed powder palette, I don't know what to say. The reason I wanted to bring this guy along, so this is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked palette. I know it's been sold out everywhere. Everyone's been tweeting me being like, stop talking about it because it's sold out. I know. Again, when I'm traveling, I like something that offers kind of a range of looks without me having to carry a ton of loose products. So for me, I really, really like the idea of having kind of the range of sort of like highlight bronzers up top here because I can sort of use, you know, these two during the day for a softer look. I can go in and really like bronze up and darken and contour with a little bit of a darker powder if I want. Want to just a range of kind of like blushes and a little highlight in there. I just like having this as an option um, so that I am not going to be stuck wherever I'm traveling to being like, oh, I wish I'd brought like a darker contour, blah, 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 whatever. If I want to punch up um, the contour that I brought. I also like that this palette is really glowy finishes. The contour that I brought, I'll talk about in a minute. It's a cream, but um, it doesn't have any like shimmer to it or anything like that. So I kind of like this option of having these extra glowy powders to kind of layer if I want to. I do find that this this hourglass formula is like quite hard and I personally have traveled with hourglass blushes and the kind of like uh, ambient lighting powders multiple times, never had anything happen to them. Um, so I do find that this formula really like withstands 
travel quite well. Next product I'm packing is the Hourglass Illume Sheer Color Trio. I've talked about this tons of times on my channel. I'm sure you guys are sick of it by now. Um, I absolutely love this palette. The only downside to me is that um, this is the only shade range they offer. Love traveling with creams. I always try to offer them wherever I can because I love that they can't break, they can't get fucked up when you're traveling. I opted for this palette over some of my other cream bronzers just because I find that this formula tends to wear really well on me throughout the day, especially if I'm sweating, um, doing a lot of walking around, hiking, different stuff like that. Um, so I, I felt like this was activity friendly. So this palette's coming along for the ride. Then for brows, I also like to bring kind of a few different options as well, just depending on what I'm looking for and what I'm gonna be uh, kind of doing that day while I'm traveling. So I have my tinted brow gel. This is the one from Kaja uh, It is in the shade medium brown. So on days where like I'm not wearing any makeup at all I'll still always run a brow gel through my brows without fail. It doesn't matter as long as I have a little bit of brow stuff on I feel so much better um, if I'm wearing like bare skin. Then I'm bringing my Anastasia brow powder. Same thing. This is a really hard pressed formula. So I haven't personally had it shatter ever when I've traveled with it. And I've traveled with these brow powders for years. This is in the shade dark brown. Um, I like that these kind of have these split pans so that I can wear a lighter brow shade if I want to on, you know, like lighter makeup days, darker shade if I want to make it a little more intense. And then if I'm really going for it, um, I do bring dip brow when I'm traveling just in case, you know, I don't know, I'm going swimming with sharks, shit like that, whatever. I still want nice brows. I Especially when I'm on trips that involve kind of like water activities, I do like to bring more of like a waterproof pomade. Hourglass Caution Mascara. Wow, I'm like really fucking sucking the dick of Hourglass right now. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm bringing the Hourglass Caution Mascara. Um, this is really, really great for like wear time, I find. Um, I don't find it flaking on me. I don't find it smudging. Um, even if I'm like in the water, out of the water, sweating, at the gym, whatever, different shit like that. So I find that this mascara is very... Um, wear time friendly and activity friendly. Um, I don't find that I worry when I'm wearing it. Like I don't have to double check what my mascara looks like. It just is like on there. Then for lips, a lot of the times when I'm traveling, I'll just bring a tinted lip balm because I don't want to have to worry about kind of touching up my lips. Lips are always the last thing I give a shit about, frankly, when I'm, when I'm traveling or doing anything, honestly. So this is the Lana Lips Tinted Lip Balm. I love their tinted lip balms, they're gorgeous. I find that they're not too tinted where it's like very obvious, but they're not so sheer that you might as well just get a clear one. They do add like a little something to the lips, so they're really, really pretty. So that's in the shade Perfect Nude. I'm gonna be bringing that one. And then I usually like to bring a nude lipstick, an orange lipstick, and a red lipstick. Basically, I bring different shades that I can take different photos and different lipsticks. But for this Mexico trip, I'm going to be bringing just some sheer uh, lipsticks. I've got two of my favorite kind of sheer lipsticks from MAC. This one is On Hold, which I always like to call my everyday red. It's just a really nice sheer shade and it's super flattering, um, especially when you have a little bit of a tan. Oh. And then this one is super similar. It's just a little bit more of kind of like a corally pink and that is called Sea Sheer. They are practically the same. I'm gonna bring both. If I am traveling for work purposes or if I'm traveling where like I know I'm gonna be wanting to take a ton of different photos and stuff like that, I will sometimes travel with um, something more like this. This is the Anastasia lip palette. Something like this is a super great option. It's not, <laughs> It's not something that most consumers would buy, in my opinion, probably, um, even though it is really like cost effective and stuff. I feel like this definitely probably draws in a lot more makeup artists rather than like day-to-day -day consumers, but it is a really nice option, especially if you are good with kind of mixing up colors, because I love to bring this when I don't want to pack a million loose lipsticks, but I want to have a ton of different lip options for like the purpose of taking photos. So I just wanted to mention that as kind of a little option because I do like to travel with stuff like this if I, if I need it kind of thing. Thing. Then I like to bring just a general good old clear lip gloss, especially if the colors I've chosen for lips are a little bit more matte. I like to bring the lip gloss just because I can kind of quickly change up the appearance of any lipstick. And it's also just kind of a nice way to sheer out anything that's like more full pigmentation. So this is the Glossier uh, Clear Gloss. It's one of my favorite gloss formulas. I, I don't know what to say. Maybe I'm a Glossier bitch, okay? Eyelash glue. For eyelashes, because I travel with like eyelashes, obviously I'm just not bad. I do usually like to travel with um, a more dramatic pair and a more natural pair. These are the Esquito Gina Lash. They're one of my fave lashes, man. They're all I really care about. So I usually travel with one full pair of these and one chopped up pair of these. I always, without fail, bring a black eyeliner just in case I wanna whip out a winged eyeliner. You know what I mean? A girl needs options. Okay, and sometimes 
I mean, truly never. I never make the decision to actually wear a winged eyeliner, but I think about it a lot. So I always like to travel with a good old black eyeliner. This is the Dose of Colors Shady Cream Eyeliner. I do really like this formula and I find that it stands up pretty well uh, with water activities. I'm really making it sound like I'm like a huge water sport fan. I. I dip my toes in, you know? Who knows, maybe one day you will need to be swimming with a full winged eyeliner and you'll be like, thanks, Sam. And I'll say, you're welcome. This is really the star of the show for me. This is what prompted this video and this is how this came to fruition. So, if you've been following me for a while, you know I have been doing a little bit of a declutter and by a little bit, I mean a lot of it. I've been going through and decluttering like a motherfucker for the past year and <laughs> Something that really took the hit was neutral eyeshadows. Basically what happened was I sat down on the floor and I opened up all my eyeshadow palettes and I was like, wow, these are all neutral and they're all the same. And I decluttered them all. <laughs> what had happened was turned around and I was like, oh, I don't have any neutral palettes left, cool. Not that I don't have any neutral palettes, but I find myself continually being like, oh fuck, like this palette doesn't have exactly what I need and I end up having to use a few different palettes because I've decluttered so many of my neutral palettes because I'm stupid. So anyways, I had been wanting to put together a really good kind of like neutral palette that I could travel with and then I could always kind of have on hand at my makeup desk because I, I use neutrals every day. Um, I use neutrals a lot uh, in tutorials as well and stuff like that. Um, even if I'm pairing it with another palette that has colors in it, whatever. And I don't like having to travel with multiple palettes, which is what I've been doing the last couple trips I've gone on. This is such a long story. I am incapable of saying things in a short amount of time. Okay, great. I went to MAC and I got one of their little palettes um, and I got a bunch of neutral eyeshadows and stuff like that. But I find that MAC doesn't have a really, really good um, super metallic, like textured kind of eyeshadow. So while I like the idea of the MAC palette, because it comes with only those little, I'll just grab the palette so that I can describe this better. So this is what the palette looks like. I'm sure you guys have seen these like a million times, but it's Basically like this, you can buy the little singles that are super cheap now. They have the magnets on the back and then you can kind of stick them into these little spots. I picked up a bunch of shadows, but I just find myself always like, I'd go to pull this palette and then I'd be like, ugh, because I wanted um, some more textured shadows. So again, it was like I was having to pull this palette and then pull something else and pull something else kind of thing. I have these gorgeous, eyeshadows from Cosette. They're a less talked about brand. They're quite a small brand, um, but they have unbelievable eyeshadow formulas. And I keep meaning to pull out my Cosette shadows, but I have them all in like this fucking huge makeup forever metallic palette kind of thing. But their pans are square, so I obviously can't put them in this thing. And the makeup forever palettes I have are this fucking big. I do like these because they're so big and so I could fit a ton of my single shadows into them because I have millions. Um, and I think if I was still like a working artist, I probably would be fine with these palettes, but they, in my opinion, these are horrible to travel. The lid is really quite thin, like tin basically. And so I find that it dents really, really easily. And it's also just massive. So um, this thing for me is just like not very travel friendly. I am getting to the point. I had another influencer reach out to me. Her name is Kiki G here on YouTube. She's great, super informational videos. And she started her own brand, which is fucking dope, congrats. Um, she started a brand called Salt New York. It is basically like a little magnetized palette so you can put all your shadows in there. It has a little um, mirror. The mirror is actually magnetized to this area right here, which I think is nice because it kind of like offers a little bit more protection where this kind of snaps together, if that makes sense. Little zipper and it's just cute and it's small. This is gonna be getting a wild ride over the next couple months because I'm going to be kind of trying this out while I am traveling and see how it works for me. Hopefully it will keep my shadows nice and protected. Um, but I do really like the design of it so far. I like that it comes with a little mirror in there. Um, I like that I can fit different pan sizes in there unlike the little Mac one. And the size of this is just perfect to me. I'm gonna walk through all of my little single shadows. I know this is gonna be fucking boring for 99% of you. So just, if you need to check out here, thanks for much watching, peace out, see you later. Okay, great. Let's move on. I'm gonna show you guys all my single shadows for my kind of daily go-to palette that is also gonna be my travel palette. So the way that I kind of organize this is um, having kind of more cool toned-ish uh, neutrals across the top, 
more kind of like yellowish tones and then more red toned neutrals across the bottom. And then these ones along the very, very bottom are the Cosette shadows that I was talking about. They are just a really incredible, like super shiny and textured metallic shadow. These are definitely like my favorite pressed metallic textured shadow. I like the option of having those pressed shadows because um, while I love things like the Tarte Chrome paints and stuff like that, they're just not as travel friendly. And I, I don't like that I can't just like pop them into a palette with everything else. Let me swatch all this shit. So for that top row, the first shade that I have is Locked and Loaded, which is from ColourPop. It's just a nice kind of like matte, uh, more yellow toned shadow. Then I have uh, MAC Rice Paper, which is a little bit more of a kind of shimmery neutral. I like to have a really kind of like soft sheen um, highlight color, just in case I wanna highlight like my inner corner, my brow bone, something that's not too intense. So that one's really nice and just kind of has like a light pearlescent to it. Then I have MAC Retrospect, which is just a nice neutral kind of more glittery shadow. It's really, really great for day looks. Then I have Anastasia Warm Taupe. It's a great transition shade. It's a little bit more kind of cool tone neutral. Then MAC Charcoal Brown, good kind of more cool toned deepening shade. And MAC Tempted, which is a really, really beautiful, um, just kind of like shimmery neutral brown. I really love this, just kind of put all over my lid and blend it out for like a super, super quick shimmery day look. Okay, then for the next row, we have first the color Amber. This is from Anastasia. Anastasia. Um, it's a really, really beautiful, kind of like warm, light, coppery shimmer. Then I have Desert Sands, which is from Makeup Geek. It's kind of like a mustardy, warm brown. It's really, really beautiful in the crease. Then I have MAC Uninterrupted. This is such a beautiful, kind of like unique shade. It's a little bit deeper than this one here. Um, you'll find that a lot of the shades that I picked out are kind of close to each other. It's because I always find myself kind of like dipping back and forth between the two because I always just want something that's like perfectly in between two shadows. So a lot of the times I'll put uh, shadows beside each other that are really quite close so I can kind of dip back and forth. But it's a little bit darker, a little bit more kind of like mustard toned. This one's so beautiful, put like right across the lid and just blend it out just that one singular shadow. It's so pretty for like a nice kind of like grungy, quick, day smoky eye. Then I have MAC Woodwinked, which will forever be one of my most favorite eyeshadows. It's so beautiful. It looks so uninteresting in the pan, but it's just a really, really beautiful kind of like neutral brown shimmer. And then I have Espresso from MAC, which is a really nice, super, super neutral, deep color um, to kind of add to, you know, any neutral look to make it a little darker. Then for the next row, we have MAC Honey Lust, which is a really beautiful uh, kind of like peachy shimmer. This one I find has a little bit of a finicky formula, but it's just such a beautiful color that I could not put it in there. Then I have Anastasia Pink Champagne. This is one of the best eyeshadows they've ever come out with in my opinion. It's such a beautiful, dusty kind of rose color. Then I have MAC Saddle, super classic, warm neutral. MAC Swiss Chocolate, which is a little bit more of a kind of red toned brown. Then I have Anastasia Hot Chocolate, which is a really kind of like almost plummy dark brown color. I find that it pairs really beautifully beautifully with any kind of shimmer that has more of a pink or red tone to it. And then Anastasia Deep Brown, which is a really uh, deep, almost kind of gray brown shadow. So it's really, really nice for like smoking out a lash line. It's not quite black, but it's still really, really dark. And just in general, deepening up shades without uh, making them a warmer tone. So if I wanted to kind of keep the tone of whatever color I'm trying to deepen, for instance, let's say I was trying to take kind of like a mustardy brown like this. If I was to pair it with something like this, it would automatically kind of turn out to be more of a warm toned eye. Whereas I can take something like that that's super neutral, almost kind of dipping into being a cool tone and it will really kind of deepen the shade rather than turn it into a more warm toned eye. Then for the final row, these are all the Cosette shadows that are so beautiful. The first one that we have is Halite. This is uh, like more of a pink toned kind of shimmer. It's so so unbelievably beautiful. Then we have Platinum, which is a really, really beautiful um, warm silver. It's not a silver that's um, particularly ashy or really blue toned. It's really, really, really beautiful. Then we have Bliss, which is a super neutral kind of uh, champagne bronze color. I find a lot of the times with uh, bronze tones, they either go really, really orangey copper or really, really kind of uh, gold toned. So I love that this one is just neutral, beautiful, 
so gorgeous. Then we have citrine, which is a little bit more of a kind of soft gold copper. Then on the end we have shiva, which is a really beautiful kind of like penny color. I find that it's a little bit less textured than these four, uh, but it still has a really pretty shine to it. And then here is all of the shades swatched together. Fuck, I'm a good YouTuber, man. Uh, I did put down a little bit of concealer just so that you can kind of hopefully see the difference in undertones. So this is our first row, second row, third row, and then across the top are all of our uh, Cosette shadows. That's the whole shebang, that's all she wrote. That was super white. So that is all the makeup I travel with. Of course I bring my little brushes, I put them in a little goodie bag and bring them along for the ride. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something cool. Hmm, would you have in this video? Probably not, but I mean, whatever. <laughs> all right, you guys, I will see you next time. Peace out.